For our 63rd installment of our journey through the real book, let's check out Thad Jones' great jazz ballad, A Child is Born. I'm Ron Drodos from KeyboardImprov.com. Thanks for being here. And Thad Jones wrote this um, as a ballad, but it's in 3-4 time, which is a little unusual. Um, so instead of your usual sort of 4-4, four, four, same thing but with three beats in a measure. One, two, three, one, two, three. And with jazz ballads I find that one of the keys is um, it's it's to really keep this steady tempo or to feel it. It's almost like it's coming through you, not you're not really creating it. I find it's almost like a, a river is going already. Just a slow river um, and I'm just joining it so I don't have to create that tempo. And then within that, there's all these little possible subdivisions. And if you listen to Bill Evans, for instance, on his, with his uh, classic trio with um, Paul Motion and Scott LaFaro, like Live at the Village Vanguard, you can hear they're hitting a lot of those subdivisions, but it's not the usual ones necessarily. Like you can divide a jazz ballad into two and play straight eighths. So it's these, these uh, subdivisions of uh, eighth notes, triplets, and also um, sixteenth notes. And also the sixteenth um, uh, notes on the triplets, so six sextuplets. Uh, Let's see, one, da, 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 da. Let's see. So instead of triplets, there you go. Play them. I had a little trouble thinking of that. So it's interesting when you try to. This is good practice. Trying to really say, okay, what are sixteenths? What are something like? Um, and then, then what you do is all those kind of mix in your head as possibilities. So you can hit any of those. flexibility comes. So within this flow of this kind of river going by, it's like each of these little potentialities, where am I going to place it? Is, on, is it on the, the, the downbeat or the first sixteenth note of the beat or the first um, uh, sextuplet of the beat or the second or third? And you, you know, it's not really analytical in, in intellectual sense that you're not really counting so much. That's why it's a little hard for me to count there because you're not really doing that. You're just kind of feeling these. So, one, two, very simple. So when you listen to Bill Evans or other great ballad players, Charlie Parker, another one, you're going to hear the notes placed on any of these little spots within the beat. And that's, um, that's what you're aiming for, that rhythmic flexibility that makes you sound at a whole nother level. Uh, it's a beautiful tune. It has a pedal tone of B flat and then E flat minor six, so you can play the major seventh or minor ninths, whatever. So um, it's beautifully constructed too with the bass line. If you really look how it how it moves at the end from F to G flat to G, and then around the circle of fourths again. Just beautifully constructed tune, not just a beautiful sounding tune. Um, so here we go. Let's see where this takes me, and then you can try it for yourself. You know, you uh, you know from your copy of the real book.
Oh, I love playing jazz ballads because you just, you just, it's like they just take you to a different place. Uh, have fun with this. Think about what I said at the beginning about that kind of uh, tapping into the flow and then all those little spots, those little places you can place the notes within that flow without, keep, without losing the overall sense of the beat. And uh, good luck with this. Um, thanks for being here. If you want help with your jazz piano playing, I'd love to teach and show you um, everything I know, as they say. Um, you can check me out at keyboardimprov.com. I teach via Skype or through my video course. Uh, thanks again, and good luck with your playing.